So I was in a coma. Great conversation starter, I know. It's a complicated story. I had a surgery and it went bad and I got an infection and then it attacked my lungs and so then induced coma. So I, it was something called a medically induced coma. So I didn't just pass out. They actually gave me drugs and continuously gave me drugs for a good two weeks or so so that I could be in this sleep state and they could try and heal me and get me to live. So many dreams, so many stories. So here you go. This is what it's like being in a coma. First things first, everything that happens in the real world, you hear, you're aware of, you kind of know what's going on. But it goes through this weird like filter thing in your brain. And by filter, I mean it's going through the drugs. And then it turns into something else once it like actually hits your consciousness. So example, I know a lot of people would come to visit and sit by my bed and talk to me. I, I heard my stepmom and my, um, my own nanny talking and all that. And I heard what they were saying, but then in my head, we were in like a girl's camp, like one of those like log cabin camps. And they were gossiping about one of the other girls. Really, they were just talking about like one of the nurses and something she had said. But like in my head, they were like gossiping. And I was like in on it too. I was talking back to them, but I wasn't actually talking. And sometimes this messes me up so much when I'm going and looking back like on the whole experience. I remember so clearly saying something back to them and being like, oh yeah, that Peggy. I didn't say anything. So it was like all a weird conversation in my head with everyone and I wasn't even talking. Another thing that would happen was like uncomfortable positions that they would put me in. My brain would make up a story for why I was in those positions. At one point they had to actually tilt the bed in something called Trendelenburg, which is like literally tipping you upside down. So there I was like upside down and like swollen like a balloon at that point. And in my head, I was like going in this weird like hammock thing. And then I remember I got like my foot caught in the hammock and so I was like hanging upside down and I was like, this is so weird, why can't I move? Like I should just be able to pull myself up. But then logic doesn't really work very well. The best part though, and the thing that kind of inspired a whole trip after I got out of the coma, was all of my Alaska hallucinations. I've never been to Alaska. I've never like shown any interest in Alaska. But for some reason, while I was asleep, I kept going to Alaska in my head and it was so beautiful. It was like pine trees and coves and, and I remember just like sitting there and just like staring at the most beautiful scenery ever for hours and hours and there'd be like a little deer off in the corner and, and it would be freezing cold but I didn't care. Turns out I was getting ice packed the whole time so I had a crazy high fever with a crazy high infection and what they do for that is they put ice packs all around you like they that's literally like the most advanced thing they can come up with. So being iced, I guess somewhere in my brain I thought like ice, Alaska, totally makes sense. One of the funny things too was the way that people's voices, like if I liked the person who was talking and I felt safe there, it would affect what was going on in my head. And I didn't notice this at the time, but like once I came out, I kind of like studied the whole experience. But every time it was my mom or my dad or people that I loved, it was someplace beautiful and it was comforting. And when it was people that I just kind of barely knew, it was always strange and I had no idea where I was and I felt kind of lost. And it actually gets me thinking a lot about how that happens on a regular basis, even when we're not on crazy drugs like how do the people that were around and the experience that we're in influence our brain and our minds and how we see the world like pretty much being in a coma is just like a very magnified and intense version of our own dreams and so what can we learn from them and what can we learn about ourselves and I, I learned so much from that experience I mean First of all, that I love Alaska, apparently. But second of all, I really love, like it showed me who I care about and, and who makes me happy and, and how the world can be manipulated so easily and how our own minds can be manipulated and we can really believe so much. I don't know, talking about it kind of makes me happy in a weird way. You wouldn't think that, but yeah.